good afternoon. Here we have a uh, Tibet Art Movement uh, uh, initiating Tibet Art Now. And then in this uh, Tibet Art Now we have uh, uh, one, uh, several of the Tibetan leading artists from the world. And we have Tarpin Linzang here, a uh, very traditional way of painting Tibetan art. And we have, uh, uh, we find it very interesting to have the uh, Tibetan traditional art to start uh, the whole contemporary art world, which uh, starts from traditional uh, painting. So in uh, Darwin is, is uh, I find, is one of the, uh, the very beautiful way of painting traditional paint, uh, Tibetan art. And I myself has followed this uh, uh, style, it's called Karmagati, and his father has been one of the most uh, leading artists uh, in, from Tibet. So, um, Mr. Dr. Ninsang is here. Can you please explain a little bit about your art, please? Thank you. Flower. 
and the use of small chunks of butter to map the auspiciousness of festivities is prevalent all throughout Tibet. Once people started to develop more sophisticated weapons, animals, bigger animals such as tigers and leopards were hunted and the skins were worn by the hunters to symbolize their courageousness. But the skins also have a natural pattern and the color and that was also used as a, uh, as a clothing. And later the skins of these animals changed into attires only worn by royals and aristocrats. And the body of this royal um, were decorated by tiger skin. The head of the tiger was used as quiver and the leopard skin was used to hold the bow. <coughs> The various different skins also started to symbolize the different uh, hierarchical positions of, among the nobles and uh, victorious warriors uh, in war were adorned with feathers of peacocks, of white-tailed eagles, falcons, and uh, these kind of symbols are also found, found in Thangka painting nowadays, especially when we paint uh, figures of kings, of nobles, and uh, in particular in um, the paintings of Ling Kesar and the warriors, these sort of symbols and forms come back into Thangka painting. Now gradually, different indigenous regions started taking root in Tibet. And uh, in, in Nari, in central Tibet, many cave paintings were discovered with uh, symbols of Sastika, the sun, the moon, um, and some figures of men and women and animals you know, representing or symbolizing their form of religion. And uh, slowly, according to legend or history, the first Tibetan king, Thomi Nyatitsembo, was an Indian prince who fled from India into Tibet. And once in Tibet, he came across some men who, when they asked him where he came from, he pointed towards India across the Himalayas. These men mistook that and thought he was pointing towards the sky. <laughs> and then, after some miscommunications with the language barrier and so on, four of them, they decided to make them as their lord, and subsequently he became the first king of Tibet. And the story of the legend goes on further to say that the first seven kings of Tibet was directly connected to heaven because of the way he pointed towards the sky. And these seven kings were believed to have a special sort of thread or God that uh, directly connected them to the heaven and when they died they did not leave any corpse but ascended directly to heaven and I think it was the seventh or the seventh or the eighth king that when they when he had a quarrel with one of his ministers and they were fighting and the minister has said it has been said to have caught the cord and since then the Tibetan kings started leaving their corpse <coughs> but the the thing about this is, in the Yundung Pon tradition, the original indigenous uh, religion of Tibet, when they are constructing, uh, performing a ritual, and constructing is what is called a healing mandala, they use the same system of having a thread and a ladder to symbolize the deities descending down from the mandala, in, uh, descending from the heaven into the mandala. And uh, also, the founder of uh, the Pon, he said to have descended from 